Hello and welcome RC Shim in the hangar. Today we will be testing antennas once again. My channel has kind of a history of antenna testing, so you will find a lot of videos of me testing antennas. I always searched for the best way to test antennas because I was curious myself which of those aftermarket antennas are the best performing ones. And with DJI's digital system, the SRT files, the subtitle files, they tell you a few times per second about the bitrate and the bitrate is the best way to measure how good of an RF signal you get on your digital goggles. To log the data and to have them in a chart and compare them like as efficiently or as exact as you can. So let's jump into the Excel spreadsheet on my laptop. I know now which are the best for me and that was kind of the point for me. And also I wanted to share my results because I'm really, really, really happy with how it's turned out. So let's see you on the other side. I have the distance and each of my testing, I got the data. If I go all the way down, you see, yeah, in some cases, five Mbits at 990 meters. We have the Excel charts. I condensed them to six test scenarios. And of course you can find these Excel files as a download or even view it online if you don't have Excel on your computer. Here on this axis we see the 25 Mbits. Oh, this is the best reception up there. And down here you see the meters of distance. The border of the image here correlates to the line. So green pagodas, pagodas work quite well because go check them out. They are not true omnidirectionals, so that's why they have the better reception here in this test. True C, uh, CP5 are not bad, the bright orange line here. But also the normal True C singularity stuff is the red line is, is, is quite nice. The dark blue line, the victory stuff is, are not too good. They are okay-ish. They are way tinier than the normal stock antennas, so yeah. They have the size advantage for being smaller. But if you need to decide between the truasses and the vase, I would go with the truasses. They're a bit better. Yeah, and between the stock antennas, stock antennas one and two, yeah, they look quite similar. But I thought that the Stubbies version two, because they are really thought to be used with 5.8 and, and 2.4 on the potato drone, I thought that the V2s were worse than than the V1s, because V1s are designed for 5.8, right? I wanted to see goggles version 1 versus goggles version 2 using the same antennas, uh, the better Omnis that I had here, the true RC CP5 studies. And yeah, this also looks quite similar to a test of mine where I used the same antennas and the same goggles on different days. So that's this kind of normal variance. Yeah, sometimes the goggles version one look a bit worse here. Yeah, maybe they have a slight disadvantage over the version two. Version two, goggles version two seem to be a bit more consistent. Here, just a quick look at this test. You see this test is more or less useless because in one kilometer you cannot test the directional antennas too good. They don't differ too much. Directional antennas compared. True RC. X Air Mark II. Thanks Hugo from TrueRC from sending me this for a review. No money was in exchange other than me buying antennas from him and he giving them as an extra. So thanks for this. There's three and a half turn death ray helicals from a guy named Henrik in Sweden. I also tested the seven turn helicals from the same guy once again. Cyclops 2 video aerial systems. I've been using those three and a half turn helicals now for yeah, two or three years and they worked exceptionally well, give me every time the best signal, like enough confidence. They still look like they are the best antennas. The seven turn, which should have far more range than the green ones. Yeah, here they are higher, but then they are quite similar. So I wouldn't take the extra weight and size as a disadvantage here. I would always use the three and a half turn helicals. Maybe the five turn helicals, which are also available from Henrik, but yeah, three and a half turn is a good and small antenna. But even smaller are those X2 airs from Trussie. 
the violet line and this is here and this is not too bad especially down there in the far reach of my test like 1.9 1.8 1.9 kilometers they're all quite similar the bottom ones are once again VAS Cyclops version 2 and the normal iFlight Crystal HD, the patches that are hidden behind this faceplate here. So the red is the faceplate patch and the bright blue is the VAS Cyclops 2. So they are not, not so good. Between these two I would rather choose the crystal patches or in that regards this the similar XC HD2 faceplate patches they are just convenient because they don't increase the size of your goggles and they have yeah similar range than the Cyclops is I will be using those true C X airs from now on because they are not too much worse than the three and a half turn helicals from Henrik, but they are way smaller. Yeah, it's like really small compared to this. What I don't know yet is how much better are the three turn helicals in terms of beam width and, and yeah, flying on your side or behind yourself. That's maybe where the green ones are better than these here. Once again, the iFlight patches versus the three turn helicals. This was always my lazy situation when I didn't want to use uh, a long range antenna and have it like ultra portable then the price you pay is the blue line is yeah further down and giving you less of a good signal far out whereas the orange line you see is very very good and here I tested the death rays on two different days so green and orange same antennas same everything so that's about the accuracy of my testing here. You see those green and orange line is quite close to each other. That's how it should be. When flying with the true RCs, for example, or the XE HDs or the crystals, you have two ports for the patches and two ports for the omnis. The idea is that with the omnis you can get good coverage on your side or behind yourself and with patches good coverage in front of you. There are a lot of tests in the internet uh, that tell you where the stuff is should be placed and when you take a look at the product picture of Hugo uh, he has a true RC has the stubbies on the bottom so that's what he suggests using them on the bottom I tested it stubbies on the bottom stubbies on the top stubbies on the top make more sense to my understanding or stubbies diagonal top right bottom left or top, left, bottom, right. And this is what you see here in different lines. So always the same antenna, same goggles, but different orientations. And to make it short, between green and orange, or the dark orange or brown, there's not much difference. And this is top or bottom. So both stubbies on the top or both stubbies on the bottom work best for me, period. <laughs> and diagonal, Top left, bottom right, what many guys tell you, ah, not, not really good, at least not in the end here. So uh, I was really happy to see, or to once and for all, test this diagonal myth. And here just another testing of mine where I used the same goggles, namely the V2 goggles and the same True RC CP5 on different days. And I made a lot of average to make the curve smoother but you see it's yeah it's almost the same it's maybe shifted here a bit i'm quite happy with this kind of accuracy so this is my test accuracy <laughs> yeah and just just for the fun of it that's if you want to use directional antennas with one kilometer range it doesn't work you don't see <laughs> not here. okay if this was too fast for you and if you want to take a uh, closer look at this yourself. Go ahead and download this Excel spreadsheet or view it online and check it out and leave me your suggestions. So my current test setup and this should really be now the best way to test antennas, at least DJI antennas is. 
On my radio I can receive the telemetry logs from Betaflight. On my switch SF, which is my arming switch, I also have the function SD logs at 0.1 seconds. That's the interval and that gives you a CSV file on this radio, which you can download. And with a super cool online tool, you just upload your radio's log file of one flight and you combine the SRT file, you can combine it online there. You no, no manual labor needed whatsoever, what, what I've done in the past. So you upload those two files there and have them wonderfully compared there. So that's the quick and easy method to plot a chart, um, meters, meters of distance versus bitrate. If you want to see it in more detail, you can download his combined view in a CSV format, in an Excel readable format, then transfer it to Excel and do whatever you want there. And as I'm kind of an Excel geek, I loaded a heck of a lot of antenna test flights into one Excel sp spreadsheet. Exia 2 Mark 2 and the step is on the bottom. Diagonal, Crystal HD, the Death Rays, Stubbies version 2, Stubbies version 1. Trussy Singularity Stubbies, CP5, VAS Stubbies, or ORT Pagodas. I saw some birds in the air, but that's how you know that they really don't appreciate you flying here. I heard two fat drops on the roof, like half a meter where I was standing from, like here. Then I worked on this data and I, I think I have a really nice way now of displaying the results. And the best of all, you can retest this yourself using my method. If you don't like the Excel part, you can send me those files and I do the anal analysis. But anyways, almost scientific way of comparing antennas. That, that will maybe be the title of this video. I tried to fly as precise and as repetitive as I could. So at least each run had the same flight pass. I, I take a lot of measurements per each meter of distance. At the 10 meter mark, at the 20 meter mark, and average there and later on I, I cut the data so the way back isn't accounted. No flying 45 or 90 degrees or behind myself uh, that's not the topic of this antenna testing. Then I use 25 milliwatts, I use 25 mbits, I use channel 5 because channel 5 is right in the middle at around 5.8 gigahertz where the most antennas are tuned to. The copter is a Chimera 4, it has a long true RC singularity antenna as a TX antenna. Then I fly one kilometer away and there is also a catch. You cannot legally fly more than 500 meters away from yourself. And I don't want to make the same mistake that a uh, certain Australian guy antenna testing did and get myself in trouble. So I found a really cool way. A friend of mine wore the reception goggles and locked the flight. I was 500 meters away from him and flew firstly towards him, 500 meters, and then I could fly one kilometer away from him, from the receiving goggles, but only 500 meters from me. And in later tests I saw that for directional antennas one kilometer is not enough, so we extended it to two kilometers. He was one and a half kilometers away from me, and then I could fly uh, eventually to two kilometers of distance to these goggles. My testing is also quite repeatable in the results it's giving me. So I would fly the same antennas on the same goggles the one day at one location and then the next day a different location. And these two curves, I will display you one now, they are about 5 to 10 percent of, of variation. You cannot get it much more accurate than this under still non-scientific situations, but it's a very practical test. Using the same antennas should, should yield the same results and it kind of does. Okay, so that's all for today. Hope you learned something. Arsishim, you will learn something today. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching. Please remember to help my channel by thumping up this video, by subscribing if you haven't. If you want to support me even more, you can check out my Patreon wall. I post things like the results of this video, the antenna tests, I give away results there way early. At least if you're in Europe and if you want to buy stuff from an FPV shop, there's only one that I do an affiliate link system with and it's fpv24.com, German-based shop. You don't need to buy any of these antennas there, but if you use my general affiliate link, uh, it would help me. So far I made, I think I made 7 euros out of this. <laughs> 
it will be sitting there as a budget for future purchases so I can buy new antennas and test them for you and stuff like this. So that would be very much appreciated. But the most fun I get out of making these videos is yeah, the feedback that I directly get from you. So leave me some comments and let me know how you liked this video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.